Hey, good morning, everyone. Well, good afternoon or good evening, I guess, wherever you are. Uh, we are about to start our session, Darden students, where we have, we are, um, it's absolute, my absolute pleasure. First of all, I want to preface by saying uh, to interview and talk with these Darden students, uh, just a little background about myself. My name is David Fang. I am the moderator for GMAT Club for this session. I actually went to UVA for undergrad, so go Wahoo. Uh, and Darden is, is obviously one of the top business program in the nation, in the world. Uh, today, we have three uh, current Darden students. We have Evan, we have Fernando, and we have Pratik. So um, after I'm done with my boring introduction, I'll uh, hand the mic to them, and they'll talk a little bit about their background and you, uh, sort of, you know, which school did they go to prior to Darden, what their working experience is, and kind of what they're doing right now in terms of pursuing career and where they're at in, in that stage. So, uh, but before I move on and we go into the interesting stuff, I would like you guys to take the time to subscribe to our GMAT channel and for more exclusive MBA content. So that's it for, for the boring intro, I promise. So I am going to quickly hand the mic to uh, you guys, which one of you guys like to kind of start off and then we'll just go around a circle and then I'm going to, well, after the introduction, then I'm going to ask a list of questions. Sure. So hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Evan, and I hope most of you recognize my face still after kind of this off and on period where I'm you know, doing videos, not doing videos for GMAT Club. I'm one of the directors on the forum. We're now taking some time off to pursue my MBA. Some would say that's worthwhile. Others would say not so much. Uh, I come from a financial consulting background in the Northeast of the United States. And I am looking towards general management, brand management, and marketing. So definitely more along the uh, in-house businesses and not necessarily the consulting or the investment banking arms of some of these larger corporations. Uh, okay. Pratik, do you want to introduce yourself now? Sure. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Pratik. I come from India. Uh, to your questions, did my undergrad in business, then I was running my startup in India before coming to Darden. And for the summer, I'm going into technology. So that is what I've been doing and what I shall be doing. And I guess that pretty much covers it. Fernando, you're next. Amazing. Uh, it's great to be here with you guys. I see Evan and Pratik on a very regular basis at Darden. So great to see you guys here in video as well today. My name is Fernando. I'm originally from Brazil. I'm a lawyer by training, have worked for the government over there, and now I'm making a career pivot to strategy consulting. I'm a second year here at Arden, so that sad moment of graduation is approaching very fast. We are like less than 50 days away right now. And personally, dog lover here, travel, big fan, have been to 28 countries, and Costco number one fan, best place in the world. That's a little bit about me. Thank you, David, for giving us the opportunity for this intro. You know, fun okay. fact about Fernando here, there's a Costco about a mile away from Darden. That was the Ooh, number yeah. one reason he decided to come here. Exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You got me. I was just saving that for later, you know. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Thank you for all of you for a wonderful introduction. Uh, as the moderator, I'm going to ask questions, but you know, if you guys want to talk within yourself and, and kind of sharing insights about Darden that you feel like it, it might even be more difficult to get it from the, the NBA Reddit or, or the GMAT Club, feel free to jump in as well. Uh, to start off, I, I feel like uh, I, I want to make this session as interesting as possible, uh, not just because I'm the moderator, but genuinely because I graduated from, from UVA. I feel like I can ask more hard-hitting questions just because it's my alma mater. Do it, do so, it, do it. So, 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 so the first question, sort of demystifying Darden for us, right? Telling us what Darden genuinely is. And if you just do a cursory search on the NBA subreddit, you will see comments such as Darden is where fun goes to die, right? Because of the case method. As rigorous it is, it has its pros and cons. So question to you, all of you guys, is it true that Darden is where fun goes to die? I can go first, having been almost two years here already, uh, to answer your question your question directly i would say definitely no so no we have a bunch of fun here and i say not only for myself but having moved here with my wife 
very frequently she says oh my god i can't handle more events you know just go yourself to this one i will stay home so we do have a lot of fun here and what is true is that basically everything in life is made of trade-offs so the question i would make to people thinking about coming here is what you want for yourself do you want to be sure that you will have a good one academic background and two good public speaking skills and three uh very quick um how can i put that very quick ways to come up with an answer and there's and understand a case if your answer is yes to that naturally the trade-off is what you will have to dedicate more time mm -hmm. to study to prepare for cases to prepare for classes and that's where Jordan's academic rigor come in so it's all about what you want we have a lot of fun here on a daily basis but do you have to dedicate yourself more to academics than if you went to another school to many of them probably and i say probably not definitely because i haven't been in any other so yeah there is this academic very strong component pratik and evan what do you guys think of Oh. Pratik, do you want to go? I, I have some very strong opinions here that counter Fernando's in a lot of ways. So if you want to go, I can finish it off here. Sure. Then I guess it's going to be a two versus one because I agree mostly to what Fernando has mentioned that there's a lot of opportunity to have fun, but it also depends on what you are looking for. And technically, like through the recruiting experience, what I have observed myself is the first semester gets a bit uh challenging as you're looking for job opportunities you are adjusting to the way of teaching the case method etc so it's rigorous but once you're done with that once you're done with the first semester i think the graph of fun can only go upwards over here so like we are in the typical j curve moving towards the top now so that's my opinion but evan probably has different opinions so i would uh, want him to go next and like want to hear what he has to say so I'll start off by saying stereotypes exist for a reason, ladies and gentlemen. Darden is known as the boot camp. It is known as the single most academically challenging MBA in the country. And I can say for certain that that is a true statement. Us in New Chicago truly go and take fun out back and butcher it to death. Um, does that mean that it's unmanageable? No. But I mean, I, me and my friends, I was going to include critique in this, but apparently not. Um, we have cried together. We have bled together. We have slept in the trenches together, and that's assuming we've had nights where we've actually slept. Uh, the, Darden does push you to the limit in a lot of factors, and you do have to be ready for that. Do you have fun? Of course. Uh, we have something called cold call every Thursday night usually, and then Thursday night drinking club attached with that. There are events uh, as far as the eye can see. We, me and Pratik are now in our fourth quarter. We are very much on easy street at this point. Fernando's been on easy street now for about a year. And you can kind of tell based on, well, I don't really know if it's hard is, but it's probably, but it's difficult. The first three quarters of Darden through core are going to beat you up. But if you truly want to learn, this is the competitive advantage of Darden. And this is why you want to go any MBA program in the country. You can have a fun time at, you can have fun at Wharton. You can have fun at Kellogg you're not going to learn as much. You're, you're probably not going to learn 20 to 30% of what you learn at Darden because you are so committed to it, because you have to do it. If that's not something that you're, uh, I guess, aiming for, meaning you're just going to MBA for a fun time, Darden is not your school. But if you want to learn, if your goal is to get an MBA to actually learn material and learn toolkits to apply to challenges, I would say this is the best school in the country for you. I mean, how dare I claim that you're, you're, you want to go to an MBA to learn. But if that is your driving force to going to get an MBA, I would recommend you come here. All right. Awesome. Thank you guys for, for, for your in, uh, inputs here. Sort of want to follow up based on kind of what I'm hearing from, from you guys. It seems like obviously the, the rigor of Darden's program is predicated on the, the case method. So maybe my follow-up, natural follow-up question to that would be if you guys can let us sort of outsider understand what makes the case method more difficult or more time consuming than the, the, the traditional sort of lecture style uh, education. Uh, that would be my first question. 
Um, and, and sort of the, the second follow-up question I have for you guys, it's, it, it would appear to me, it, it seems like, as what you guys are mentioning, it seems to be a learning curve. And, and for the first three semester, Darden is extremely rigorous, but then it kind of tails off later on. Uh, what makes that the case? Is it just because you're so, uh, you've adapted and acclimated to the case method, or it's just, it appears in terms of the curriculum uh, tell off in terms of difficulty? Uh, sure. So for the case method, like I guess the biggest learning curve is that you have to be prepared for class. So it's complete opposite or like a flip side 180 of a typical lecture method where you know what's going to be taught and you go into class one uh, and you start learning from there. But at Darden with the case method, the learning starts before the classroom. So we read our cases, we prepare our notes on it, and then we go in class and discuss. And our professors are more like the moderators of the conversation where they lead us down a path that enhances learning for everyone. But it's not necessarily that it would be a lecture that they are saying that this is right or wrong. But we, and because of that, we end up like exploring different points of view because with a lot of things in business, it's not just like what the theory says, but a lot of what is applied and what is the outcome out of it. And I guess like the case theory really helps in exploring these different like opinions or different strategies. Um, and one thing which I'll call out over here is Darden is very intentional in terms of how they set it up. So it's not like you are on your own. We have a cross-sectional like learning team made up of six to seven members. So everyone's coming together, discussing things before class. You go into class and the professors are always available. I'm not sure, I can't speak of the other universities, but Darden professors have pretty much an open door policy where whatever questions you may have, be it regarding what you've learned in class or otherwise, you can walk into their offices and have a chat anytime that you prefer. Or they have office hours, like some of them, depending on their availability, but they're pretty much available all the time. Yeah. yeah, I completely agree with Pratik. I think he said it all. Basically, it's no wonder why Darden has such a great placement in consulting. And that talks back to the case method because you are basically having to go over a case, a new situation every day and having to come up with quick answers to that. And as pr Pratik said, if you don't really prepare yourself in advance, you're going to be in class and everyone is going to start talking about that case, about the different scenarios that could happen, the different concepts involved, and you're going to be listening without understanding anything. So that's where the need to prepare comes from. And also from the possibility of being code called anytime by the professor. And for the learning curve, I believe he, he said it all as well. Basically, not only you start to get more used to the way that classes at Darden work and your brain is more adapted to elaborating these quick responses. So maybe in Q1, you had to read through it all to be able to come up with a response. And in Q3, you are not anymore because you are already so used to that, that you can read some excerpts and already get the big picture scenario. What's basically what's done many times in consulting. So not only because of that, but also because the core at Darden, it used to be in my year, it was until Q3, now it's until Q4, right? So also once the core is over, it does get easier. So it's a combination of those that make uh, it get softer, smoother as you go through this MBA journey. Uh, journey. Uh, Evan, anything you would add? Uh, sure. So similar to what you and Pratik have already said, uh, with the case study method, you, you're teaching yourself. So you have to be a self-starter and you have to be willing to read some very dense uh, technical notes that have all these formulas and you're going to be lost 60% of the time when you read them. That's just the, uh, that's the nature of the game. When you go and meet with your learning team, and they're usually spread out across accountants, financiers, marketers, you name it, it's meant to be a collection of students. That's where you take your first step in learning. Meaning if you have any questions, you get it answered there. And if everyone in your group still has questions, then you bring that to class and the professor takes you step by step through the case and helps you understand sort of the right way to go about it. 
And we've had professors who have gone 25 minutes on one section of finance and then drawn a big red X through it and said, this is wrong. Everybody did this. It's wrong. Here's the right way to do it. So there is teaching and lecturing involved, but it's very light comparatively speaking. Um, and Fernando, you hit the nail on the head, which is it gets easier for two reasons. One, we are used to it. Uh, once you get into your routine and you find your groove, for me, the weekends were best to get through a lot of the core classes uh, or the more quantitatively heavy classes in terms of casing. And that gave me the week to just space out other non-quantitative classes and prepare for them a little bit better and recruit. As you get into that routine and as you get through Q2, Q3, Q4, you you know what to expect. You're prepared for how class looks. You're not a gear in headlights anymore. I went through DBD, Darn Before Darn. That was a shovel, highly recommended, but a shovel to the face because no one knew what to expect. Nobody understood what we were getting into. And even through Q1, that kind of persisted. So while the learning curve is pretty steep, once you do get into your routine, once you figure out what works best for you, as long as you are that self-starter who is willing to engage and willing to sort of take that leap, not knowing if you're doing it right, and then having it answered as you go along, that's the biggest learning point for most students. All right. I was literally going to say that. Please uh, like this video and allow the YouTube algorithm to push it so that more people can see what we're talking about instead of just the four of us talking to ourselves. And yes, we will go to the question at the end of the session. So please just keep posting them as, as much as you have, whatever that's on your mind, just put it on the screen and we'll try to answer as much as possible at the end of the session, right? Uh, thank you all so much for the, the insightful response to, to, to my question. And uh, this is really, really free flowing and this is good. That's what I wanted to do. I have a list of questions actually, I'm just gonna skip it, I think. Uh, as I'm kind of understanding and listening to what you guys are talking about, the case method, I am going to play the devil's advocate here uh, simply because I can. I went to UVA. Uh, I, I see two questions I really want to ask, right? First, you, you would have people that, would, um, whether they're asking this out loud or internal, it's, well, the case method is very educational. Is it necessary? Meaning, I think we all know the ultimate goal of an MBA top MBA program is to acquire a um, you know top tier job, right? Uh, we only have twenty four hours in our life, right? If we do spend eight hours or a very long time on the case method, how many hours can you realistically spend between sleeping, eating, and most importantly, recruiting and doing the interviews, right? So does that? Uh, incremental education be helpful or would it detract me from sort of um you know preparing for my interview and i think the argument can absolutely be made if you want to be a consultant right because basically what you're preparing you're, you're literally preparing for the interview but then the counter argument would be if you're not doing consultant right how genuinely helpful is the case method so that would be my first question uh I know it's very long-winded, but I think it's necessary to ask it. The second question is then I'm playing the F that was advocate here. There are, as far as I know, only two top school MBA programs that that do the case method. One is obviously Darden, the other one is HBS, right? If the case method is genuinely so good, why is it that the other top MBA schools are not adopting to that? Why are we not seeing just more than two schools out there that's doing the case method? So I'll let you guys have the spotlights. I'll, so I'll take this and I'll kind of answer your questions in reverse order. Uh, Darden and Harvard, just to dispel some, uh, maybe some misinformation. Yes, we're the only two schools that do exclusive case study method, but every school in the country does case study method, just not 100%. I think Duke is at 50%. I think Dartmouth is at 75%. Uh, these numbers may have changed. It's been a little while since I've looked into it. But every school does the case study method because it truly is the best way to learn. The difference between Darden and HBS is that competitive advantage, that idea that academic rigor is what is going to produce the best uh, students and the best performing uh, consultants, bankers, analysts, you name it. The difference between Darden and HBS is that Darden does a different case for each class. HBS, I've been told, and I believe I'm right on this, does one case per day, meaning marketing, finance, accounting, all one case, you kind of do a deep dive, darn, you have one for each one. Uh, so the schools do uh, engage in that. Uh, and to answer your first question about sort of the case study method and why it can be beneficial to everybody outside of consulting, I'm, I'm doing general management. 
And what I can say is that general management, similar to accounting, uh, accounting, <laughs> consulting, you need to understand the, the full view. You need to be able to look at a question, diagnose a problem, and figure out a solution. And that is what an MBA is for. An MBA is tailored to be a problem-solving degree. The case study method teaches you how to do that. And I think a great example of this was when one of my learning team members went to a uh, get together of some of the top 15, 20 business schools in the country. I don't know if it was PwC or KPMG, but at the event, they were told to do a case together and everybody at the table basically followed the lead of the darn student, my friend. And there were two in the top 15, actually they're considered top 10 schools, who literally looked at my friend and said, oh, the reason you're so good at this is because you go to Darn. We have fun all day. And you know, that's why we're better. Not sure you want to brag about the fact that your school hasn't taught you how to case and you don't know how to approach things and therefore Darn is worse. But that that's where you see the difference come into play. You know how to solve a problem. You know the steps to take. And you subsequently know how to handle it in that situation where a lot of schools really don't. Uh, and so that's where I'd say that case study method plays out in everything, tech, consulting, GM, banking, uh, you name it. It plays to all sides because of how well-rounded it is and the end goal of it. Um, I'll follow up and I'll just add, like, agree with everything Evans uh, said so far. And one thing is, like, when you think of it, be it consulting, banking, tech, general management, when you join a job after post MB, you would be at a mid-management level where every decision that you make has to be very cross-functionally aligned so it's not like if i'm leading marketing or product for a tech company just because i feel so i should be i would get to do what i want to do it's like do we have the financial resources for that does the marketing team align with me on it and a lot of these factors that cross-functional and cross department thinking comes much faster and better with case method in my opinion so even when like I'm taking a bunch of finance classes, even though I'm not going into banking, but that definitely would help me down the line in making better decisions and managing stakeholders in business as well. So that's like my opinion on why like the case method is really helpful for anyone going beyond consulting or banking. I echo everything you guys said, because not only in our careers, but in our lives, we are always going to have limited time to come up with a solution and hypothesis, whatever you want to call it, to a problem and go verify, go see if the problem is really that. So that's what the case method is all about, allowing you to get to this hypothesis very quickly and teaching you how to verify them in a time-constrained scenario. So for any career, not only consulting, it's really helpful. And also one thing that I will point out here, for, it's helpful for everyone, but for internationals, I do believe it has a special appeal because in my case, for example, coming from Brazil, I didn't speak English in my job, in my day-to-day -day basis, I didn't really speak English. So the case method pushes you into this public speaking scenario where each answer you give, you're giving it in front of around 70 people. So you're developing not only your language, Acumen, but also your public speaking skills. It, Fernando, I just want to add on to that. Mm -hmm. People, so at Dart in particular, if your first quarter you have marketing and everyone assumes, oh, marketing is going to be an easy class. Marketing takes a baseball bat to your kidneys, especially depending on the professor you have. I had one who's fantastic. Unfortunately, she just left Dart and her name was Tammy. She would do a cold call. Cold call is you you come to class and she says eeny, meeny, miny, mo calls on you and it's 20 to 25 minutes one on one, at least in marketing, where you no one else steps in. You have to answer the questions. You have to be right. But you have to do it, in, as Fernando said, in front of 70 students and to a lesser extent, in every other class cold call five, 10 minutes of discussion. This, this is why it's so critical to rely on learning teams and to rely on uh, your learning skills within those teams, because you are going to need to justify the answers, the solutions, some of the questions you have in front of all your peers. And it can be a daunting task at times. You're going to be a deer in headlights, but that it is so valuable once you get the hang of it. And once you feel confident is when you walk into a boardroom or a meeting, your hand's going to shoot up every time you know the answer to a question and you're never going to hesitate. So daunting, yes, but very, very impactful. 
All right, thank you for all of your answers. I'm actually going through some of the poster questions and some of them are genuinely, all of them really good. And uh, in fact, I, I almost feel like I should ant, uh, ask these questions, but I have a list sort of like a few questions I definitely want to go through. So please hold on to your questions. We'll, we'll put it to the end and we'll definitely answer them. And I'm really looking at the list right now. Some of them I almost wanted to ask right now, but hold your horses. Uh, uh, transitioning sort of uh, away from the case method and kind of moving to speaking more general about the Darden program, uh, trying to understand you guys uh, one year ago or two years ago, uh, the viewers are probably on the same seats as you are sort of like going through the MBA process and thinking about which schools to apply. And once they've got accepted to these schools, ultimately thinking of uh, like in my mind, I'm thinking there, there are two main groups of audience that are listening to us right now. The ones that are thinking of deciding to apply to these schools or like they've already gotten accepted. Now they're deciding like, oh, should I choose Darden or should I not choose Darden? Uh, would you guys mind speaking about your experience? Why did you guys end up choosing Darden maybe perhaps over some of the other schools? Uh, what went through your decision making? Let's start with Old Man River on this one. I don't know if that should be a compliment, Old Man River. Is it because of the beard? <laughs> It was you know that, from the heart. Thank you. Thank you. Every time I ask people that they ask me, how old are you? And I say, you guess. I actually stopped saying you guess because the answers were so bad that like <laughs> I just gave you. <laughs> but uh, I got accepted. I got admitted. I was lucky enough to get into four uh, top 15 business schools. And the reason why I chose Jordan, actually three reasons why. So first one was the case method. Uh, second one, and I can elaborate a bit on each of them. Second one was the community. And third one was the town of Charlotte too. So going to the first one, case method. As I said, I'm a lawyer by training. So I thought I would really be bored in lecture classes. And I like to be engaged. Not only that, but also being someone who wanted a niece making a career transition to consulting, I was really convinced that this would help me, and it did, in fact. Second one, community. I do believe that Darden has a really unique community in the way that it's tight-knit, it's very collaborative. For example, people, when I was recruiting, and I... I'm sure that this applies to all of us. People are really willing to get out of their own ways to help you, to dedicate time to help you. So the community here is all about that. It's all about helping each other and paying it forward. Not only from those lenses, but also, as I mentioned, I moved here with my wife. My wife and I work today. So something that was really important to me was that she felt very included as well. And I would say she's even more included than I am sometimes. People just send me invites for some events and say, hey, call Marina, bring Marina. And if she goes, they are happy. I don't even need to go. And third and last one, the city of Charlottesville. I knew that throughout our careers, we are all going to have opportunities to live in medium and big sized cities. So I did want to live this college town city experience. And Charlotte series is a great time if you want that. Uh, Pratik, Evan, what do you guys think about it? I mean, I'll let Pratik answer this, but my first thought is, you no, know, I, I asked Marina to do this uh, session instead of you. So exactly, uh, <laughs> that would be natural, you know, for most people here. Just ask Marina, you know, she will know better. <laughs> oh, yeah, Pratik, why don't you why don't you share your thoughts? I can cap it off here, and then we can swing into uh, some of the audience questions. Sure. Uh, so I would say the three reasons Fernando uh, gave apply to me as well, but just in a different way. So number one, case method, like I have a work experience of seven plus years. So I wasn't confident that going into a classroom setting uh, in front of a lecturer would be helpful. Would it motivate me to learn? That was the biggest thing for picking like a case method based school. Then the second one, the community and I've seen what Fernando mentioned, like everyone goes out of their way at times to help you and coming as an international, that's really appealing because there's a lot of unknown variables that you are already working with and like having one less on your plate definitely helps. And the third is like it being a small town, I wanted to experience the American like, you know, college town life 
and also the cost of living is slightly cheaper than being in a big city so those were like my reasons like exact same reasons but different like logic behind those uh and then i guess i'll finish this up here my my reasons are slightly different i obviously there's overlap there's only so much you can say about an mba program about why three different people would want to choose it uh this is not a rubik's cube that changes every time for every single person uh, I'll say first and foremost was the fact that it was so academically oriented. I knew coming from my background, I didn't have the skill set to run a business. Uh, I didn't have the skill set to be a high ranking executive somewhere. That just wasn't possible. And so I wanted to learn. I wanted to build that toolkit. I wanted to be able to stand there confidently and not just say, well, here's my fancy degree. Give me a job. I want to be able to support that. And Darden has given me that. Uh, I'll say I came from the Northeast and I was thinking, you know what? Michigan's cold. Not that that's a problem. I actually like the cold, but maybe it's time to break out of the Northeast a little bit. Cornell is isolated in the middle of nowhere in upstate New York. Probably not good, great to go there. Um, UVA is out an hour outside of Richmond. I'll say if you're going to be bored down here, it's based on the fact that you want to be bored down here. And that was really appealing we have more restaurants per capita than I think any other place in the country. So there, there was a lot to do and a lot of history. Uh, Jeff Thomas Jefferson, who's one of, you know, America's founding fathers, one of the former presidents helped build this university. It is steeped in history from uh, slavery to part of the civil war to, I mean, it's the lawn, which is the, uh, the rotunda where Jefferson started building the university is a world heritage site. There is so much Americana here that to me, as someone who's a history buff, that to me was very exciting as well and enticing. Uh, it was the idea of conquering Darden. I mean, there, you don't, when you get to an MBA program, you, you hear, so undergrad, if someone goes to you, Chicago, you're kind of in awe, like, oh my God, you made it. I wanted to conquer Darden. I wanted to say, yeah, I survived the hardest MBA program and I'm better for it. Darden changed me and I didn't expect it. So, but I was hoping it would happen. So I was looking for a, a truly quote unquote transformational experience, which is, everybody says all the time, oh, it's transformational. I can tell you with a straight face, this program changes who you are without question. Uh, so that that's my sales pitch, but you got to be willing to put in the time and effort. This is if you're not willing to put in the time and effort, the school's going to chew you up and spit you out. So do not come here if you are not ready to hike that mountain. Speaking of mountains, uh -oh. I think we should talk about Charlottesville, right? I think uh, you simply just cannot take Starship into consideration if you're genuinely considering Darden, especially I think it's true for international students. A lot of them are living currently in, in big cities, right? Uh, having that uh, maybe a lot of you guys have not been in America before and kind of thinking for, for your perspective, why wouldn't I want to be in New York City? Why wouldn't I want to be in Chicago? Why wouldn't I want to be Boston, right? There are top schools in each one of these big cities. Uh, why should I be in Charlottesville, right? I mean, I, I've been in Charlottesville for, for quite many years due to my undergrad experience in UVA. Obviously, I have mixed feelings about uh, the city as its goods and bads, but um, kind of maybe if, if you guys can talk about your experience with Charlottesville, your expectation of Charlottesville, uh, before you know att attending Darden um, so to, to enlighten the viewers and audiences my sales pitch about why Charlottesville not maybe a major city uh, I did consider other major cities uh, not just Charlottesville or Ann Arbor Boston was on the list uh, among them New York City was on the list I would say the big thing around that was the idea that Charlottesville yes well so Charlottesville is a tiny city even Charlottesville proper which we, is Albemarle County, it's fairly condensed. Uh, you you have a lot to do, but there's not a lot of space around there. You can walk around for a while and it's beautiful, uh, but there's not a huge amount of area that where you can go to. And I think that benefits Charlottesville for two reasons. The first, if you're in Boston or New York, Chicago, your friends, so everyone in your cohort can be shotgunned across a massive area. You're not going to run into anybody you know, or maybe there's a small chance. So you're not going to build that strong, tight-knit community that maybe you're looking for in the sense that me and five friends can go out to a local bar like Boylan Heights. We can run into 12 uh, of our cohort just sitting there at the bar watching a game 
or see a group walking by who are going to go up and do an activity. Um, maybe they're going to hike at Shenandoah. Maybe they're going to walk the tra- the Riviana Trail. Uh, so you you have the ability to see so many more people. It is small town feel. I think that contributes to being closer knit than being in a big city. The other thing is Charlottesville, similar to uh, where Duke is, uh, you're in a very rural environment. I can go two minutes up the road here. Me and Fernando are actually neighbors. We, and so again, we joked around last time we did these videos, we could have got come to each other's houses and done this. Um, and then Pratik is you know, like three minutes the other way. Um, <laughs> we could all get together and go and hike two minutes away from here, a couple of trails. And you're going to be in nature. You're going to see deer. You're going to see a variety of birds. You're going to feel completely isolated from the city and from the school. You're going to feel like you're in a completely different environment. And you can't get that in New York City. You can't get that in Boston. You can't get that in Chicago. So if you are the type of person who maybe enjoys the big city feel and you need all that activity, do not come here. It, it, it's not going to work. You are going to feel bored. You're going to feel isolated. You're going to feel alone. And I have friends who went to Duke who feel that way. But if you're the type of person who doesn't need to be connected to a major city, you have closeness with the community and you have beauty all around you in nature you also are close enough to a major city in Richmond that you can go there anytime you want. So it provides a really great balance. And frankly, in my view, allows people to engage in other aspects beyond just, oh my God, I love New York City. I love Chicago's atmosphere. I love Boston sports. There's more to get out of it than just that. And just on top of that, the only thing I would say, uh, because I do agree with everything Evan just said. So... I would like to tackle <laughs> one big myth that people mention. That is, being in a smaller city makes it harder to network. So dividing that into two different buckets, you can consider people that come to you, one, and two, the people you go to. So under one, people that come to you, companies come here at Darden at massive levels. So, so, so many companies. You can just take a look at the employment report to see. So in terms of who's coming to you, are you losing something? Are you missing on something? Absolutely not. And two, in terms of you going to people, once again, you would have to go to them wherever you are. You would have to reach out to them. You would have to take advantage of the network that your school provides you to reach out to them. So the work would basically be the same. Oh, but I would be in New York. So I would be able to have a coffee in person with person uh, X, Y, Z. Okay, you would, but at the end of the day for your employment seeking journey, does it make such a big difference? I won't answer that because I do think that the employment report answers for itself. So, Patrick, anything you, you would add on that? or? Just the last part would want to add on to that. Just because you're in a big city doesn't mean the people you want to meet are going to be available at the times that's convenient to you. Uh, So that was like a major factor in my decision as well. And second is the thought that two years after B school, I would anyway be in a big city for my work or like whatever professionally I am doing. So it would be a nice time to take a break because I would not be able to do this unless I retire. I come By the way, like, Charles is here. Mental. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Charles. Hello, Charles. See, we are so popular. We have even such a star watching us. Jim at Ninja, Charles. Thank you for being here to give us more support, Charles. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, I I have my opinions of Charlottesville that may be slightly different from you guys, but that's I think that's purely because you know I went to undergrad there. It's been a while. And also, I think the undergrad experience is drastically different from the MBA experience. When you're undergrad, you're looking for things that are very different from what your MBA program. So I'll speak about in our time. It's neither here or there. Uh, I, I do want to, I think it might be a good time to go over some of the questions. Uh, hopefully, we've answered some of them. But if not, I think I want to uh, go through some of the... Um, there, there, there's a follow-up question, I think, that is uh, genuinely interesting uh, by... Anjani, sorry, uh, if I'm not pronouncing your, your name correctly, sort of uh, follow up to the case method and, and trying to understand uh, the preparation and the time going into, you know, 
the, the the actual lecture sorry lecture i don't want to use like like the, the class right and, and i think he's wondering if it would be like too time consuming and sort of like you have a, a group that is uh i don't know what the exact term sorry uh, uh teammates or that are sort of like do you assign who takes what portion of, of the case or how does that distribution uh work well fernando is no longer in learning teams they usually are for and they are only for core and then after your three or core classes, and the reason for that being uh, your core classes, you're in the same seat in the same uh, classroom every day uh, for the first three quarters. I mean, seats change each quarter, but you're with the same people, different professors coming in and out. Uh, so keep keep that in mind um, that Fernando, had. it's been a little while since he's done this, but me and Pratik have gone through it. Pratik, do you want to take this first? I can add on what my learning team has done. Oh, uh, sure. So first, before even diving into how learning teams operate, how they are formed. So number one is like Darden, they have like access to obviously everyone's information and they're very intentional in designing your learning team. So there are two things that go in. One is that they're spread across different sections. So we have like five sections over your A to E. Uh, a, section of 70 people each and the class size is 350 people um, and second is that everyone comes from a different function so in my learning team i was with people who worked in marketing i did like i had a startup experience there were people in finance people from consulting people who came in from banking a veteran over there so number one like it brings a lot of different perspectives into your learning before you get to class and second is everyone has their strengths so how my learning team operated is initially when we were in the thick of recruiting people who have strong backgrounds and can go through a case much faster, give a more deep dive into the case for everyone, they would end up taking that one and we would assign it equally. So if there's a banker, they would do more of the finance cases. Someone from marketing would pick that up and we would distribute that. And once like uh, things started moving in terms of recruiting once we started getting done. Then people started spreading uh, different type of cases just to build that rigor, rigor themselves as well. So I started taking more of the finance ones and operations ones, et cetera. Uh, so that is one thing. And second is like learning teams are given to you. They are not self-selected. But we've also had uh, like instances where people started like because they felt that they could add or contribute meaningfully in other teams or other spaces, they form their own learning teams as well. Just down to what Pratik said, different learning teams operate different in different ways. The, oh, it's not a one size fits all model. For example, Pratik said the bankers would take the more finance heavy ones. In my learning team, we would assign cases at each at the beginning of each week, make it even, but it would be every single person getting usually the same amount of finance, accounting, marketing, you name it, because we understood that we wanted that balance and to make people uh, do some of the cases that they weren't overly comfortable with. In terms of timing, usually you meet at the very beginning, you meet four times a week. So you meet Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night to cover the case for the following day. As we got to Q2, we my learning team switched and we started doing twice a week. So we started doing Sunday night and Tuesday night where you would cover two days worth of cases for each one. And that those usually took about an hour and a half to two hours. So spending about 30 minutes on a case is appropriate. Sometimes if it's a bigger case, you take longer. If it's an easier case, shorter. Uh, and then this quarter, because we only have two core classes together, we've now started once a week. So we meet Sunday night. It's usually for an hour and a half at most because we're in a routine and we know each other quite well. And then we go off and do our own thing thereafter. Uh, but the point of the learning team is to very much depend on each other and take that time to learn from each other. But it, but it is malleable. Learning teams fall apart each year. Most teams stay together. You, you are meant to truly experience what it's like to work in a, in a consolidated environment and one that is going to help you be a quote unquote better student. Um, so don't think of it like an obligation. Think of it as a way to help improve yourself and create a really tight core group of friends that are going to be with you through the end. Fernando, any anything else that we missed? No, old guy here, long time. You know, I have been in a learning team. <laughs> and I will say that during your MBA, and I don't know if you guys are already starting to feel this way, Evan and Pratik, there's this strange feeling where I, 
it feels like, as you said, Evan, DBD, Durden before Durden, it feels like it was just yesterday, but it also feels like it was 10 years ago. So we, it's this strange feeling of time. <laughs> uh, and th for now, thank you so much for, because I want to speak on that too. When we started in DBD, Mark Lipson, who's one of the department heads in finance, said these are going to be long days but short years. And I think that's the most accurate way to put it. These have been long days. And these are, there have been some long weeks. We're five weeks away from finishing our first year. And I'm sitting here saying, where where'd the time go? Um, it is the most paradoxical dichotomy I've ever experienced in my life. Where it took forever, but now I'm here. And it feels like it wasn't that long ago that I was just starting and moving down here. So be prepared. The NBA is like the twilight zone. It is it messes with your mind in a variety of ways. I like this expression. This is what <laughs> I'm going to start to use now. Paradoxal, paradoxal dichotomy. Nice. It's much nicer <laughs> than what I just said. <laughs> See, we have fun here. All right, I'm way, going I'll to... apologize for us continuing to hit the subscribe and like button. The, no, we, we have a couple of people who want to make sure you subscribe. I personally believe saying this over and over again makes people not want to subscribe and like. So I'm not I'm not the bad guy here. My hands are clean. Well, yeah, subscribe and please like the video so it helps with the uh, YouTube algorithm. He, he, well, um, by the way, he's the bad guy. I mean, yeah, there we go. I finally <laughs> got the direction right. <laughs> Uh, I'm the bad guy. Uh, the, the, uh, the next question, um, uh, it's, we have a curious question from Pooja. Uh, sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Pooja's wondering, uh, she wants to work possibly in nonprofit after MBA, wondering if UV Darden would be a, a, a right choice. I think that the question behind the question is that is the core, uh, you, you talk about the case method, is the rigor of it worth it if you're not doing things that specifically require that type of perhaps communication skills and um, that level of commitment. So, uh, Fernando, you want to lead us off? You're the guy who's about to have a full-time job. Don't say it like that. I'm going to be, you know, all cocky. <laughs> uh, thank you, Puja, for the question. And I remember you from other sessions. So thank you so much for being here with us once again. And if you want to work for an, with nonprofit, do you think Darden would be a right choice? I do. I, I think that as long as you want to develop yourself in the ways that we mentioned, Darden is the right choice for any career you would like. Not only because we have a very big network of nine different areas, so that's one. As two, besides the core, you can choose electives that suit your uh, career goals. So you can craft the course experience to what you would like to do in the summer and afterwards. So is it the right choice? I would say it is. Uh, the one thing I'll mention, is it Bridgespan? That's like the really high-end non-profit consulting firm. Yeah, yeah. And we do have some people going to Bridgespan. We, we have a good number of people going to bridge span. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to do nonprofit, I mean, there might be, I can't say Darn's the best for everything. I know there are better schools for nonprofit. Um, for nonprofit consulting, we're, we're probably one of the top two or three. But outside of that, um, it, yeah, I mean, it's a good school. Could, could any of us claim it's the best? Probably not. Okay. Um I think this is actually my question. Sorry, I'm kind of hijacking the, the, the conversation here a little bit, but just as a natural follow up to Pooja's question, right? I think it's important to understand in terms of like opportunity cost and, and value of time. It's you have top 10, top 15 business schools, but realistically, we cannot apply to all 10 or all 15 of them, which is not possible. The way that the MBA application is being structured, it's not those, um, if anyone has gone through sort of the uh, undergrad application, you have a common application and so you just have uh, submitted in batch of all the top school, right? Like you genuinely have to take the time and go through the essays, interviews and understanding the school. So it's it's impossible to apply to all top, top 10, top 15. Uh, my question for you guys is sort of um, similar to Pooja's question. It's, let's just say I have a short list of uh, I, I want to create a shortlist of five 
top 10, top 15 MBA program I want to apply to. I already have four in mind, right? I have only one last stop left. Make the case for me why Darden should be the school that I want to put it in the last part of, of, of my short list of five MBA program out of the top 10, top 50 business school. Pratik, you didn't talk last time. Why don't you lead this one? Sure. <clears throat> like, Unless you don't want to. I mean, we do have no. a lawyer present who can <laughs> make a case as well. No, I get it. But uh, I guess it all depends on what you are looking to get out of the B school program. And I guess Darden still like touches or does a great job in every kind of aspect that someone would want to look for in a B school program. Like if you want a top job or at a top firm, as Fernando mentioned earlier, look at the employment report. We have one of the highest success rate in like the top difficult to get industries. Then if you want to really learn something or and if you want to develop your skill set, we do a great job over there. If you want to optimize your time in building connections and have a community around you, Darden does a great job again. So I can go on and on, but it all comes down to like what one individually wants. And there would be some people which even Evan touched upon a bit earlier that Darden is like rigorous in terms of academics. And if that is something that you do not wish to get out of B school, then maybe it's not the best place. Like even if you get in, you might not like really like it over here. So that's the only thing that I would like call out. But apart from that, if all the other general aspects from an MBA program, I think we are one of the top programs in the country for that. Fernando, why don't you go? Or do you not Actually, want to add? No, I, I wouldn't add to that. I would say that the answer for me would be the same as for White Arden. So the same reasons I mentioned there, I would use here to make it into one of my top choices when applying. Anything, Evan, you think would be worth adding? Yeah, so I'll, I guess my first question to you, David, or whomever you're speaking for, is what schools do you have on your list already? Because Darden is a fairly unique school. Uh, I would want to know what industry you want to target. Uh, each school has a different strength. For example, Wharton, top 15. Some would say, you no, know, Harvard, Sanford, Wharton, top three, if you will, M7, uh, is great for finance. NYU Stern is great for finance. Uh, what, what do you want to do? And beyond that, figure out what type of culture do you want? Would you be a fit for Darden in the sense that are you willing to work hard? Are you and is that what you want? If you want to have fun, as we've talked about a couple of times, Darn can have let you have fun, but you have to realize academics are kind of important here and they are going to push you to limits at times. Um, and then as we've already discussed with city, location is important. If you cannot live in a small town or small city, you you also shouldn't come here. So it it all depends on the type of student you are. No, and do some introspection, figure out what you truly want. And if Darden sort of aligns with what you want, meaning you're applying to Michigan, which is Ann Arbor, college town, great in tech, great for consulting, also a state school, pretty much Darden's equivalent, just with a different color. Uh, if those are the type of schools you're looking at, then yes, Darden would absolutely make sense. But if you're applying to Stanford, GSB, if you're applying to Wharton, NYU, Stern, Columbia, you're clearly targeting tech or finance, meaning that Darden is probably not the school for you. So just be honest with yourself. You don't need to apply to every top 15. Don't, don't chase ranking. That could, that's the dumbest thing you can do in the world. Any school in the top 15 is going to get you where you want to be. So just be true to yourself and don't overthink the process. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I think it, it's a good response sort of to the question of doing some interaction and understanding what you want out of the school before making a informative decision, not just blindly following ranking. I would, I can completely agree with that. There are, I think we're almost running out of time, but I do want to get these two questions, which I think can be combined uh, from Lee Lin and, and Badri. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, both of them are uh, at looking for some clarity in terms of uh, wanting to get into asset management, VC and PE. I know none of you guys are sort of you know, gunning for finances, but uh, they're sort of wondering, is Darden good at those areas? Meaning, what I want to repeat again is the v specifically talking about VC, private equity, and asset management. I, I mean, they can, I, I kind of want to target a different question, which, and by the way, Pratik and Fernando, if you want to answer it, uh, by all means, my view would be, 
there are a there are better schools out there, no question about it. And B, that we do have our employment report that shows you people going to VC, PE, um, and uh, I banking in general. And so I would, I know we're out of time or close to, but I'd recommend people to really dig and look at the uh, FAQs rather than ask us like, oh, what's the average amount of work experience? What's the average GMAT or GRE? Are these industries good uh, at Darden? These are things you can find online. But uh, pretty good, Fernando. If you guys want to answer because you have a better, quick answer, by all means, please. Uh, Do you want to go first, pretty? Yeah, I just first. mentioned that on the website, there are a bunch of these professional clubs that like help students like recruit for particular industries. They can always reach out to people, all the contact details are there on the Darden website and the PE and VC clubs would be better positioned to answer this particular question. Um, uh, yep, go ahead. Just, just to give a quick bifolded answer here. So one, the answer to this question, we do have an asset management program at Darden that people participate. Then you get the equivalent that would be for this program of a C-level position. So that exists. It's great. And regarding VCP, may, some people do transition directly. Many others go to consulting and then to VCP. And just the second part of my answer here will be a last piece of advice for the sake of time. So I saw many people asking, uh, what would be a nice strategy to get out of the wait list, to be admitted? And you can use this answer I'm going to give not only to this hypothesis, but also to get a job or anything equivalent. What I would advise you all to do is find out why you, what makes you unique. You can come here and tell us, oh, I have a great curriculum and ABC. Okay, it's kind of given everyone does to be at one of these great schools. So what is it about you that should make company ABC, school XYZ to admit, to hire you? instead of the other 100 very well qualified professionals once you discover that just leverage that to your advantage and make it clear in every interaction that you have so that would be my last piece of advice here uh david i do want to get to this question sure go ahead uh uh Pratik or fernando do either of you want to start off with any advice for someone who's going to be joining us very soon what I can say for targeting consulting is be sure and really be completely sure to leverage the pre and opportunities that companies offer for you to engage with them. So for many companies, the applications for such programs are already out. So yeah, be sure to leverage that if you want to go to consulting. I'm going into tech, so I don't think that I'm a best position to answer consulting question. So like Fernando is your guy. Fernando is your guy. I mean, and Fernando, I assume you recommend people take it easy and not case until they get to Darn. There's nothing that you can gain from casing ahead of time. My only you exception to that? that, because no, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. And indeed, take this time to rest and to chill, because as we said, it's going to be a lot once you come here. The only exception that I would say to case to start casing before you get to the Arden is if you are going into uh recruiting programs pre-mba so companies normally have two kinds of programs one is informational more for networking and the other is recruitment wise so for example i recruited in august 4th 2022 for my summer in the other year so if you are doing this kind of program that allows you to recruit and if you want to take this opportunity that's the only option when you should start gazing before Darden to get prepared for that otherwise and even though be sure to have some good time of rest to get together with family friends and enjoy this big achievement that you all have conquered that's great advice also oh sorry uh, apparently I posted the wrong link uh, oh, so if anyone God. has questions, oh if anyone has questions <laughs> that we don't get to, or you don't want to ask a question uh, via live chat, whatever it is, that's my GMAT Club forum. Uh, 
my user ID, I check it every single day. If you do send me a, an email or a message, I will respond. Uh, so please do uh, leverage that to uh, your heart's content. But David, I think we're pretty much out of questions at this point, or do you see something that we missed? I think, are we running out of time? Or I think we're supposed to end at 11. We're running a little over time, but I don't really That's mind okay. on, unless you guys have somewhere to go. Yeah, I do um, have to I, jump in a bit. Maybe I have time for one last question. I, I think we answer a majority. We, we certainly might have left one or two really good questions out there. But again, Evan has his link out there for anyone who wants to have follow questions specifically pertaining to Darden, I think that is the probably the best link to to reach out to. Um, and I think just, you know, to sort of end this session um, on a high note, I think what Fernando just mentioned sort of, I, in my opinion, as someone who is about to embark on his own MBA journey, I think it's quite underrated advice is to take it easy for one or two months prior to the MBA. Uh, I, mean, I understand from the perspective of a lot of, especially international students, they're thinking like, oh, wow, like this is going to be such an investment. I got to make sure my investment pays off. Therefore, I want to try to maximize and optimize the, the chance of success by doing the extra work. Um, but I think that, at, um, you know, if, if you've got, not gotten the message uh, by now, it's sort of like Darden and specifically top 10, top 15 MBA program, they have all the resources to allow you to be successful. I think you going to have to not sound cliche, but trust the process, right? Even though you haven't started, like you, you are qualified enough to get accepted. Um, the school is good enough to get you to where you want to be. Um, the people there will be supporting with you, uh, for you along the way. Uh, my brief experience with interacting with students at Darden is that they are actually really, really teamwork oriented. Um, they are actually willing to spend the time to help each other out versus um, not going to name names, but I think my experience with some of the really top tier MBA program is not all of them are very team oriented. It might also have to contribute with the fact of that you guys are doing the case method a lot so much that there is the team dynamics and uh, built into that. So that I think with that, I am going to unfortunately have to conclude this session. I could definitely talk for for more about Darden and the UV experience, but uh, we, we, you know, if, opportunity comes we can possibly do another session and obviously we'll, we'll be doing sessions in pertaining other top MBA program and MBA schools in the future so be on the lookout for that and please subscribe to GMAC Club and thank you all for tuning into the session today thank, thank you, you David so much, everyone